thinking about a guy who is who is in a bar or something okay and he drinks a lot so he's very drunk and what happened is that this person uh, you know he want to go back to his home okay so he leaves the bar and he want to go to his home and he's somehow always moving randomly because he's so drunk that he doesn't know where his house is okay so he's he's somehow lost and since we he doesn't know where he's going and he thinks he's going in the right direction it's random and that's why we call it random walk so uh, he's gonna be randomly moving away from the bar but maybe at a very kind of unknown error term so this is the same as thinking about you know the stock pr prices or the stock market where today's stock price is equal to yesterday's stock price plus a certain what a certain shock a random shock that we don't know it if we don't know, if we do it we wouldn't have been teaching this lesson we would have been investing in the stock market right so it is very drunk like the drunk man who doesn't really know what he's doing and where he's going to and he's going somewhere he we know that he's very close to the bar but we don't know how uh, how randomly he's going to be going away from the bar okay and that's why we think about the stock prices we know you know the same in the same phenomenon in the same way Although our interest in the stationary time series, one often encounters non-stationary time series, which is a classical a classical example would be known as a random walk phenomenon, RWM. Now, another thing about thinking about things is efficient capital market hypothesis. And this uh, hypothesis argue that uh, stock prices are essentially random, and therefore there is no scope of uh, profitable speculation in the stock market if there was then you know we will you know like all these big investment companies will try to to take advantage of that and they will put their money somehow in a way that you know they take advantage of uh, this thing and therefore the price will be you know the, the supply would be equal to the demand and somehow we are in the equilibrium point and this equilibrium t point is going to be called the steady state where, you know, it is very hard to make profits out of it until some sudden shocks happen, either from the demand side or the supply side. So don't worry about this. It is just some intuition for you to think about it. So how does the random walk look like? Now look at this curve. This is the curve of yt uh, equal to yt minus rho, but don't uh, minus absolute uh, ut. Don't worry about it, but I just want you to think how it will look like if you really want to see how it looks so it's very random although it might be very close to zero which is the bar okay that we thought about it and this is the man who's working walking around the bar and he doesn't know where is he is he heading so basically um, we are somehow trying to follow an a man who is very drunk and he want to go to his home so you can see how could we invest in him so that he reach you know we, we can make profits out of it you can see this in Wikipedia or any um, any um, stock price or stock like here, for example, I'm showing you an example of Dow Jones Industrial Average, where you can see that things are going very similar fashion to this uh, shape, which you can see that it, it is following somehow a random walk phenomenon. So this is uh, how the random walk look like. Remember that when we are talking about AR1 process is given by yt equal to alpha, uh, you know, like uh, up, um, lambda yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And a random walk is given uh, by, um, by basically by imposing that lambda is equal to 1. When lambda is equal to 1, we call this to be a random walk phenomenon. It is often always better off to distinguish between between random walks. So we have random walk without a drift and random walk with a drift. A random walk that is with drift is given by, you see this, um, this is without drift. And this is when we have alpha, alpha is known as with drift. So without a drift means that alpha is equal to zero. With drift is means that alpha is not equal to zero. Okay, and that's how you know, a random walk without a, with a drift is, but realize that in both things, a lambda is both in both cases is equal to one. Okay, so you see that one multiplied by y t minus one, and here it's one multiplied by y t minus one. 
So the random walk without drift, I'm gonna be just applying random walk without drift, but you can generalize it to be a random walk with drift. So you can see that yt is equal to yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And then we know that yt, since we know that yt minus 1 from this, so if basically remember that using this notation, we know that yt minus 1 just replacing t by t minus 1 is equal to yt minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1. And therefore we can replace this over here over here and we know that this is equal to that right and we can do the same thing for yt minus 3 and and the list go on so we have this yt minus m is equal to the sum from j equal to 0 up till m minus 1 you can see that this is m and this is the sum for example here m is equal to 3 and this will be like t minus 2 minus 1 up till t okay if you continue to to m is equal to t minus t then this becomes y0 and this becomes from j equal to 0 to t minus 1 and this how it how it goes so the expected value of yt is going to be the expected value of this but basically let's say y0 is a constant that is known so this has become the expected value of the expected, we know that this is 0 and therefore the expected value of yt is, not, is nothing but y0 okay same principles okay now the random walk with drift has the same principle but will eventually have a trend in the sequence please refer to the lecture notes and book for further details uh, for further uh, details check uh, your book and also you can refer to um, you can refer to the um, to the lecture notes of the previous lecturer, which I'm gonna post it, but she she will you know she talks about things more details. But for now, I'm gonna be confining myself with what I explained. If you want to go into more details, and please go ahead, and you know you have the book, you can read books from pages seven. Your book for you know basic econometrics from book uh, from pages seven hundred forty two to seven hundred forty six. Okay, and uh, thank you so much, and I'll see you for lecture three on Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday, which is gonna be soon. So as you can see here, you will see that uh, we are having, uh, you know, the same, these are the lecture notes of the previous lecturer. So you will see that we have done this. We have found that E of XT is equal to X0. We, which I have done, which I just mentioned, that e of yt, uh, e of yt is equal to y0. We can also similarly show that the variance of xt is equal to t lambda squared. You know what? Take this as an exercise and try to solve it uh, in your own pace. Uh, and if you have any problem in not getting this, then we can have a chat about it. And um, here are some simulations of a random walk, which is look very similar to the stock market prices as I just showed you and here for example when we are talking with drift when lambda is equal to 1 you can see that this is very similar to the structure okay and you can easily prove that e of xt is equal to x0 plus alpha t and the variance uh, of xt is equal to t sigma squared uh, okay and uh, I think you, you can easily find this stuff just by following the mathematical formula sheet that I have uh, given you okay I studied about the forecasting I told you about it so just follow the same principles nothing to worry about and um, and these are the remarks um, so an autoregressive order one is a simple example illustration of the cru crucial distinction in econometrics because it exhibits this random phenomena which we cannot really predict the future um, you know not easy to predict the future based on you know how how it really behaves the series is very random in time series the application of large sample test procedures of least squares is only valid for data with short memory process remember when we talked about short memory how much it crosses the the time in particular, the tests are not valid for random walk case. You know, the tests that we have spoken about, you know, the testing the null hypothesis and so on, will not be valid when we talk about random uh, random walk case. A different theory applies over there, and we're going to cover this in lecture three when I see you.